Hello and welcome to the very first YouTube awards show with me, Ed Chapman. Strap in for this one, things are about to heat up. I might have a sweat on by the end of this. Whew. No, don't worry, I can't sweat. I can't, it's a medical condition. In all fairness to Prince Andrew, I say we cut the guy some slack, alright? You can't seriously tell me you've never flown to the other side of the world to break up a friendship with a sex offender and then stayed at that known sex offender's house before. Come on, you've never done that. No? You don't know what you're missing out on. Lots of free massages, apparently. I mean, he must have a really bad back. Oh, I'm not surprised, you know, those private jet seats can be really uncomfortable, can't they? Easy to overexert yourself mid-flight, isn't it? Can easily pull something. So you might have noticed this isn't the official YouTube awards show. That was in December. But, you know, it doesn't mean these awards are less valid. If anything, they're more valid. Because they've actually been decided by a creator and not some slimy executives. Speaking of the Streamy Awards, let's remind ourselves of who won Streamy's Creator of the Year. Here were the nominees. The first nominee was Collins Key. Dunno. David Dobrik, yeah, of course, heard of him. Uh, Emma Chamberlain, good. Uh, Lily Singh, has she done anything good ever? Probably not. Um, then there was Lauren Gray, of course, that well-known creator. Mr. Beast, yes, Mr. Beast, good. Ninja, another one, big name there. Uh, Safia Nineguard. Never heard of you, to be honest with you. Simply Neological. Doesn't ring any bells, to be honest with you. And Tana Mojo. And the winner of the Creator of the Year for the Streamies, out of all of those, Mr. Beast, David Dobrik, Emma Chamberlain, Ninja, the winner was Tana Mojo. I mean, the only thing she did last year was charge her fans $50 to watch her pretend to marry Jake Paul. To be fair to her, it's not the first time she's charged her fans and underdelivered. She's used to doing that by now. I should also add that their marriage, which was never a real marriage in the first place, is now over. I know, gutting. I mean, I shed a tear when I heard the news. I mean, where will they get their clickbait titles from now? They could always fake a pregnancy. I mean, that worked well for Danny Cohn. So, so what was that? Oh, they've already done that one. Oh, sorry. My mistake. Sorry. Oh, wow. That creator is he really does know no bounds. Anyway, let's get on with things. I've got plenty of awards to pretend to give out tonight as we build up to the Creator of the Year and the Creator of the Decade Awards later on. But the first award is for the best podcast of the year and the nominations for that award are the Joe Rogan Podcast, the True Geordie Podcast, Impulsive, that one hasn't won, don't worry, the Happy Hour Podcast, and whichever podcast I'm Alex is doing this month. And the winner of Podcast of the Year Award is... The True Geordie! Yes! We could really do with a live audience next year, can't we? This might get pretty awkward. Well, that's for you, Brian. You can have that one. I mean, it's a close one between True Geordie and Joe Rogan, but both have been well above anything else out there in 2019. And yet the streamies didn't nominate either of them. So it's also if award shows are absolutely pointless and completely dependent on the opinions of a small number of people. Who'd have thought it? One thing I will say is congratulations to Logan Paul's Impulsive Podcast, which won the Streamy Award for that category. And it is good, but it's still only the second most groundbreaking thing he's done on YouTube. Just to clarify, the first was when he thought it was acceptable to film and upload a dead body. Yeah. I'm just glad he's learned from his lesson, you know, he's recovered from the backlash. There's nothing worse than taking a public beating, especially two years in a row. I feel bad for him. No, no. <laughs> no. He deserved it, didn't he? Let's be honest. That's probably the last time I'll mention Logan Paul, because uh, let's be honest, he hasn't had a great year again, has he? His best video last year was probably the one he didn't want making public. You dirty dog. What, what is he like? To be fair, as a podcaster, he does have to be pretty good with his mouth. So, no. No. It wasn't him. No. Allegedly. The next award is for the Best Comedy Channel. Again, there's no point doing nominations. There's only one winner. And the winner of Best Comedy Channel is... Stephen Tries. Congratulations. Ahoy hoy! Now, before anybody starts, Stephen does sweat and doesn't need regular massages. He also hates Pizza Express. More the Pizza Hut kind of guy. Younger demographic. The next award is for the biggest drama of the year. The world of TV has got Downton Abbey, whereas we've got True Geordie asking someone to take a big old dump on his chest. Now, when Brian said he liked girls at squat, I didn't think he meant like that. <sighs> that alright for you, Brian? Just to be clear, we've never done that. That was a completely hypothetical situation where I was female and squatting on him, okay? So, there go my chance of being invited on the kickoff. <sighs> the only person who was shat on wall last year is James Charles. I'm not saying that's what he gets up to in his personal life. If it is, you know, good luck to him. I am, of course, talking about the Tatty and James drama, one of my personal favourites last year. Uh, James had a, a tough time last year when he became YouTube's Thanos. Ironically, his subscribers disappeared as quickly as that. 
I mean, I feel bad about that, to be honest with you, because, I mean, it must have been a really difficult time for him. Obviously, we all saw that. And it was all because he promoted someone else's vitamins to get VIP Coachella tickets. Talk about first world problems. Bet he was crying into his Tesla for days, makeup running down the heated seats. I dread to think what he looked like. Certainly wasn't sister smiling, I'll tell you that much. Other dramas in 2019 included KSI and Deji. You might be thinking, hmm, which time? Good point. We had a whole box set of the brothers going back and forth with tweets and videos before it was eventually swept under the carpet. Probably my least favourite drama of the year, to be honest. Dragged on a little bit, do you know what I mean? Just cut it short, guys. Get straight to the point. In separate news, I was also very sorry to hear that Deji's dog has been ordered to be put down by the state in order to protect people. Sounds like Epstein all over again. <laughs> am I right? Of course I am. He was killed off, let's be honest. Anyway, the winner of this year's biggest drama award is... James Charles! Congratulations. Ryan finishing number two. Not for the first time. JJ and Deji have to step up their game for 2020. You know, work on the narrative a bit more, lads. Make it a little bit less personal, do you know what I mean? I sort of tuned out towards the end of it. The next award is the best commentary channel. Now, Mini Minter messaged me begging me not to include this award because he's vehemently against channels that take the make out of bad content. And you can understand why. If I made videos about dyeing my hair, then I'd be against them too. Yeah, I would. The nominations for the best commentary channel are Jackmate, Will and E, I'm Alex, James Marriott and Cody Ko. I'll be honest, I've only included him despite Jake Paul, you know. I mean, I bet he's fuming that some YouTuber with 20,000 subs nominated someone that he hates so much. Although he is against hate, remember? Only if it's directed towards him. He can hate on Gib, yeah, that's fine. But say anything bad about Jake and you're an internet bully. Or worse, worthy of a copyright strike. That's his only talent nowadays, isn't it? Striking people. And so the winner of Best Commentary Channel 2019 is... Jack mate, congratulations. Slight bias perhaps, because he is the only one that follows me, but you know, all award shows have bias anyway, so, uh, and don't worry, I'm also open to bribes for next year. But in all seriousness, I genuinely think this award was deserved. The podcast has been fantastic as well this year, so I think genuinely very well deserved. The next award is for best clickbait of the year. You know, previous winners include Morgs, and of course, Touch Delight. So, esteemed company to be part of there. There were too many possible nominations this year, so I'll just announce the winner. The winner of the Best Clickbait of the Year Award is... I'm Jay Station. <laughs> to be honest, he could have won this award ten times over with such work as... We bought the Grinch off the dark web. We bought a nanny off the dark web. We bought Mrs. Claus off the dark web. There's a common theme here. You might be able to spot it if you listen carefully. But my personal favourite of the year was... Brackets actually worked. Ordering Marvel Potion from the dark web at 3am... We turned into the Avengers. Not possible, baby. No. Can't do it. And yet his fans still believed him. Brilliant. A truly talented creator that we are blessed to share this platform with. The next award is the best gaming channel. Mini Minter has given me permission to do this award because it is a category that his second channel could be nominated for. Shame it's not. The nominations for this award are... I don't actually have any nominations for this one. To be honest with you. I don't watch gaming channels anymore. Do you know what I mean? Should we just say Ninja? Yeah, no, just go Ninja, yeah. The winner of this award is Ninja, who I love. Love the games that he plays and Fortnite and all that. Brilliant. Mixer? <laughs> love all that, yeah. The next award... Oh, God, this is dragging on a bit, isn't it? Ugh, it's like a Shane Dawson documentary. The next award is the most improved. This is a little bit like saying, we all thought your content was bang average before, but actually, you're all right. And so the nominations for this award are Bazinga, that's from a purely physical perspective, presumably. Your content's still just as average as it was before. So Josh Peters, Logan Paul, can you tell I'm running out a little bit here? Uh, and of course, Sarah Close. And I'm not saying that because splitting up with Calyx is an improvement on being with him. Actually, I am saying that. Being single is an improvement on Calyx. Yeah. Sorry. Truth hurts. And so the winner of the most improved creator is Casper Lee's mate Josh Peters. Yay, I went from watching none of your videos in 2018 to watching a handful last year, and some of them were genuinely very good, so keep up the great work. Up next is the best sporty event of the year. The winner is pretty clear, let's face it, you know, it's not going to be the Challenger Games, is it? Other nominees include Fame MMA. Does anybody watch that in the end? No. 
Me neither. Still waiting for them to announce all the famous, actually. So I might be waiting a little while there. And so the winner of the best sporting event of the year is KSI versus Logan Paul 2. Great build up, great fight, great result. Topped off with the tears of Jake Paul. What more could you ask for? Knockout win for Gibb? I don't know. Maybe. Wait and see. Right, what else have we got left? Ugh. Best vlogging channel? That doesn't exist. Worst family channel? There's a, a few to choose from there. I'll leave that one up to you because it has to be between seductive Halloween costumes with your kid and selling a doll version of your kid. They've got to be both fighting for that top spot in 2019. So I'll leave that one up to you in the comments section below to decide on that one. Right, final three awards now. God, thank God for that. Can't wait to get out of this suit. It's getting a bit itchy. The next award is the best breakout creator of 2019. The nominees are Robbie Knox, Blue Van Man. Sorry, is this the In Memoriam section? Oh no, wait. The Zack and Jay Show. Stump Peg. Finally, a bit of young blood in there. Mm, sounds a bit Epstein, does that, doesn't it? And the winner of the best breakout creator of 2019 is The Zack and Jay Show. Congrats, guys. Fully deserved. Great year for you. On to the penultimate award now. We're getting there. It's the creator of the year. Bit pretentious, you know, you're making a video once a week. You've hardly been creating a cure for cancer, have you? Let's be honest. You know, you spent 24 hours sat in a circle, for God's sake. Anyway, the nominations for Creator of the Year are KSI, Shane Dawson, Mr. Beast, David Dobrik, and Gameface HD. Oh, who's put me in there then? That's embarrassing. Oh, when I find out who's done this, you won't believe what I'll do to them. It'll be so bad, Logan Paul will vlog it. Oh, no, come off it. We've moved on. Those jokes have got old now. There's still good enough for Prince Andrew, though. The winner of the Creator of the Year Award is Mr. Beast. Yes, he's had a fantastic year, achieving so much in such a short space of time, as well as raising over $20 million to pay for 20 million trees to be planted, which nearly makes up for all the trees chopped down as a result of everything he bought and paid for last year. Maybe only buy, you know, $10,000 worth of scratch cards, or, you know, go through the drive through just 900 times this year. Think of all the packaging, you know? Cut it back a little bit, come on. And so the final award is for the creator of the decade. What a ridiculous title if you're a YouTuber. You know, we upload a file once a week to a website. You know, that is it. But let's look past that and pretend that we're all, you know, exceptionally talented and faultless. The nominations for this award are PewDiePie, Casey Neistat, KSI, and Shane Dawson. And so the winner of the creator of the decade, voted for by absolutely nobody, is... Shane Dawson! Woo! Fantastic. Maybe put in a little bit of fake crowd cheer there. Look, I'm not going to pretend that I watch all of his videos, but the same really goes for everyone else on that nominee's list. Uh, but let's be honest, he has been consistent. He's been at the top for so long now, constantly changing without really that much effort, seemingly. So I think it's a fair shout to say that he's the creator of the decade. To be honest, you could argue that any of those deserve that title, but let's not, because, you know, I've got better things to do with my life than debate the made-up accolades of some millionaires. Actually, I haven't, and neither of you, to be honest, that's why you're watching. So, we're both losers in that sense. And on that note, thank you all so much for watching. Your support on this would mean a lot. Uh, if you've got this far, then a like would be great too. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.